In Affinity, a symbol is an intelligent object that can be placed repeatedly on your document. Editing any one of these symbols on the page or artboard will automatically update all instances of that symbol. Symbols are created and stored through the Symbols panel. This is hidden by default, but you can find it on the Window menu. Here I'm going to use the Symbols feature to create a simple logo. I'll select the Pen tool and enable the Line mode on the Context toolbar. Then I'll create a simple curve on this artboard. I'm holding Shift to make sure it stays vertical. Now I'll switch to the Move tool using V on the keyboard. I'll use the semicolon shortcut to enable snapping and position it in the centre. Making sure the curve is selected, I'll go to the Symbols panel and click Create. Now we can see the curve on the Symbols panel. I'll duplicate it using Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows. I want to rotate this curve around the bottom, so on the Context toolbar, I'll enable Transform Origin. This allows me to change the point where the object rotates around. By default, it rotates around the centre, but I can drag the origin to the bottom of the curve, and now it rotates around the base. I'll use Command and J again to power duplicate the curve with the transform information until the curves go all the way around. On the Layers panel, symbols are indicated by an orange bar, and the objects are placed inside a symbol group. If I select the curve inside the symbol group, and select the Node tool, I can manipulate the curve and the other instances of the curve will change too. This effect is pretty cool and enjoyable, so I'd urge you to have a try at this yourself and see what vector patterns, shapes or even mandalas you can create. I'm going to tweak this into a flower shape. When I'm happy, I'll switch to the Move tool and move my brand name into position. I'll re-enable snapping to help me centre it. You can create a symbol from several objects too. Just make sure that you group them first, so they're all part of one symbol. To group them together, click drag to select all the elements, and then press Command and G on Mac, or Control and G on Windows. Now click Create on the Symbols panel. Here we can see it has been added to the panel, and I can right click to rename or delete the symbol. I'll rename this symbol Logo and then click OK to commit the change. Now I can zoom out and drag out more instances of this logo onto the other artboards. Changes that I make to one symbol will be automatically updated across the other symbols. For example, I could double click to select the word daisy and change the black fill to a yellow on the color panel. Or I could transform, rotate or resize objects meaning I can rearrange objects after the symbol has been created. Setting up logos and other repeating elements of a design as symbols is a highly efficient way of working. If alterations are needed, you avoid having to change every instance manually. I'll show you using this branding pack that I've put together. This is an example of a business literature file for the owner of a dessert shop. The client may decide in the future that they'd like to change the colour scheme of the logo. This could be a lot of work for the designer if the logo is used across lots of different stationery. However, this isn't a problem if the logo has been used as a symbol. I'll zoom into the logo artboard and use the new colour palette to change the logo. First, I'll go to the Layers panel and select the star group. Then I'll click drag on the colour picker to colour pick the gold from the new palette and then click the colour well to apply the fill. Next, I'll select the ellipse layer and change that to the dark green. Finally, I'll select the text layers by holding Command on Mac or Control on Windows whilst I select them and then use the colour picker again to change them to the new pink. Now if I zoom out and look at the other instances of the logo, we can see that they've all been updated with the new colours. And if we check across to the client's mockups, we can see that they've been updated here too. Symbol changes are not limited to colours as we've done here, or transforming like we did before. We can also change the text within the symbols. If this client decides to open another shop or franchise, updating the logo for a new location is also quick and easy. We can edit any of the instances of the logo, so this time I'll zoom in and edit the logo on the menu. 
I'll double click on the logo to select the Covent Garden text layer. Then I'll select the artistic text tool. I'll change this to a new location, say Camden Town, and just use the little green flag to center the text. Now if I deselect the text using Command and D on Mac or Control and D on Windows and then zoom out, again we can see that the other instances of the logo have been updated with the new location. Even the logos on the mockups too. But what if you wanted to change an instance without affecting the others? On the menu design, the logo is very bold and eye-catching but we don't necessarily want it to draw attention when reading the menu. Currently on the Symbols panel, the Sync function is enabled. If I disable this, I can make changes to the logo without affecting the other instances. Now I can delete the green background layer and the star group. I'll also try changing the text colours to the same muted pink as the background. I'll also do the same for the strokes in the cake illustration. If we look on the Layers panel, the layers inside the symbol group now have dashed orange lines. This means that the objects have been edited whilst unsynchronized. If I zoom out, we can see that the other logos are unaffected by our changes. If I enable Sync again, I can edit one of the symbols and we can see that all of the other instances are linked again. You might have a version of a symbol that you don't want to change. For example, if I toggle on the visibility of these two objects, we can see we have a history of revisions of the logo. The first logo has no orange lines on the layers panel, meaning it is no longer a symbol, so this version was retained when we updated the logo. Now I've finished this revision, I want to keep a record of the second version of the logo. To do this, I simply select the logo and then go to the symbols panel and click detach. This changes this symbol instance back to standard objects. So if I come back and make further revisions to the working document, a record of the second version of the logo will be retained. So that was a look at the symbols feature and how it can help to make your workflow more efficient. Thanks for watching.